Hey guys, so today we are going to talk about the price spikes and a lot of these price spikes are based on one card in particular from Hour of Devastation that has changed how people are going to view certain cards. I know certain cards are going to be cards with cumulative upkeeps. Cumulative upkeep was one of the toughest mechanics back in the day. I remember hating the mechanic because you got a benefit, but you really couldn't keep the card because the cumulative upkeep would just be too much. And there are certain cards where the upkeep just gets, it just ticks up too fast, right? So in this case, we have the Soul Gorger, where the cumulative upkeep is sacrifice a creature. That's a lot, right? Every time you put another counter on it, you're sacrificing a ton of creatures, and eventually you have to sacrifice itself. However, we have a card in Hour of Devastation where you don't have counters at all. No one gets any counters. So what's going to be good? Infect is going to be good. Cards that are anti-infect will be good, like Phyrexian on Life, which we will talk about later. And Cumulative Upkeep. There are a ton of cards, and I don't really know which ones are the best to speculate on, but I can tell you Cumulative Upkeep without the Cumulative Upkeep is so OP. This card has spiked like crazy. It is from Ice Age. Wow, Ice Age. Wow, that's an old, old set. And if you have bulk in this, you have Mystic Ramoa. This is a card that is very good, but your opponent can just wait for it to die. It is so good, it is actually played in Vintage. That's how powerful this card is in terms of what it can actually do. I've seen people want to play this card over JST Mind Sculptor. I've seen people play this card over a lot of the more stronger blue cards because it is such great card advantage. Problem, cumulative upkeep. All right, so we have a card which we don't have to worry about cumulative upkeep anymore. Solution. Hence why this little card went up from... Hmm, I don't even know if I had to guess like 25 cents, 15 cents to $2 and 50 cents and is now actually buy listing for a dollar. Great speculation. If you made it, uh, it wasn't something that was apparent uh, with the new card. A lot of this is fallout after the new card was released. Cumulative upkeep is the one that has benefited the most, but also the friction on life where you change stuff into in fact, if you can't get hit by Infect, then you're good to go. So the other thing that has just kept going up and up and up is the Shadow Moor cards. So we can kind of group this video into two different groups. We have Shadow Moor, which has just been a fantastic... If you have Shadow Moor bulk, you hit the jackpot because you have tons of these, like absolute metric tons of these cards because they were never valuable. They were never even casual or EDH playable until now. So we have the Knight. The Knight has tended up a little bit, but now it is a $3.36 card, which is incredible, right? For Uncommon from Shadowmoor. It used to be, this card was okay. I mean, had all the really okay abilities. The ability that makes it a lot better now is creatures your opponent controls, your opponent, not you with counters on them can't attack or block. So since everything is putting counters on everything else, either they're plus one, plus one, or minus one, minus one, yeah, this is exactly what you think it does. It blankets your opponent. Uh, it might be an interesting modern card, although five is a lot, but in ED8, it's just so dominant. Shadowmoor as a set, like I went back to look at it and I just saw so much of it. Wow. Um, commons, you got Devoted Druid, I think at $14 now at a common. You have so many uncommons. Blowfly, I believe, is in Shadowmoor. This one is in Shadowmoor. Uh, the whole, the list really goes on and on about the value that you can find in common on common. Okay, Frexion on Life. There is an interesting story about this card. This card was the definition of bulk during... RTR, during gate crash, there was plenty of time to pick this card up. Then it spiked, then it went down to like a dollar, and then spiked, and then went down to two dollars, and then spiked again. This card was 
one of the most like disrespected cards in Magic's history, right? If you had invested, so let's take this card and let's take Seance. This card is way better than Seance in terms of every investment. It was the same price as Seance. Seance is a little bit more expensive because people are buying it with Bitcoin to destroy. They're buying out stores just randomly to destroy the cards and maybe there's some slight interest. Pros were play, uh, or paid almost $20,000 to play the card in Seance. I don't know, that probably didn't happen, but it was an offer. Overall, it is a very interesting card because they could have picked this card, right? If the MTG Finance community were really, really good at what they did and just stellar, I mean, no one's gonna pick this card. By definition, it is a 20 cent card at the time. But then I would have nothing to say about them, right? If instead of Seance, they promoted this card, my goodness, they would be in the red. They are in the black. My goodness, would they look like geniuses. But of course, no one picked this card. So there you go. MTG Finance in a nutshell is you need a lot of luck and you need even more luck. The truly talented MTG Finance people, my gut feeling is if they know that Frexion on Life is a great speculation, why would they write an article about it? Why would they talk about it? They would just continue to buy it and then one day your 20 cent card or 15 cent card becomes a $4 card. You can buy this for $1.50. So it's a 10X return, an actual 10X return, not a fake imaginary 10X return. All right, let's talk about Calvin Souls. The foils was a very good price, uh, buyout price um, previously. This is how you do it. Um, this is how you can maintain the price of a card at a reprint. You just reprint it at Mythic. And that's how you sell it. So my solution to this crisis of no value and standard, which you know there is already there's rumors that the value in our devastation would be very very low, and from the buy lists and the pre-orders on eBay, I'm not I'm kind of skeptical as if this set is actually going to hold its value and or if it's just going to plummet into oblivion. Cavern Souls is the way to do it. You have a good card, let's say you have Chalice of the Void, why don't you just print it as a mythic? And then have, and then everyone's happy. Everyone gets chalices, it goes up. Cavern is not much cheaper than it started before the reprint. The reprint has not affected its price all that much. However, it's a way to make everyone happy. Now I do wanna take a moment to talk about this card. I think I ripped one of these on the channel that was like water damaged. I have a lot of these. Um, you might ask, why do I have them? It's because I couldn't trade them away. There are certain cards that you just cannot trade away. Even casual players at the time didn't want this. This is skeletons and zombies, and it's very, very good because giving stuff dev touch is like, especially giving your tokens dev touch and allowing you to do a one-to-one -one exchange if you're a zombie deck, that's the, uh, that's the dream, right? Because you can always produce more zombies. Wow, like I had no idea this was a $20 card or else I would have probably not ripped it and uh, just uh, traded it as damage for like 20%, like $4, like you get $4 out of it. I just assumed it was worth $4 near mint. It's quite amazing when you have a large collection and you see like just random stuff go up or in this case, this has always been going up and you just don't realize this is a $20 card. Super casual. I guessing it has not been reprinted yet because I don't see how this is a $20 card. Great for Iconic Masters, if possible. So talking about Shadowmore, it's not only the uncommons and commons, it's also cards like this one where it's like, it's always been a four to $5 card, in, but as recently ticked up in price. Again, yes, I have a lot of these cards and yes, I believe I ripped some on this channel that was water damaged because they fell in the swimming pool. Uh, the entire, <laughs> probably, probably now that I look at that pile of cards in the swimming pool, I would probably say it's a lot. Maybe I gave it away to like some patrons. I'm not entirely sure what I did with all these, but I do know that a lot of these fell in the swimming pool as with Death Baron. And I might have given away to the patrons because they were interested in damaged, high value damaged cards, which I still have a ton of. Like what fell in the swimming pool was an actual uh, trade binder. That's what fell in the swimming pool, but it was okay. It was just like a side trade binder. 
And uh, now it looks kind of foolish, right? Because all these cards are like 20 bucks. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> really? 20 bucks? Like, Death Baron especially. Like, I always assumed it was a $4 card. So I put it in my binder for $4 cards. And this card I assumed was like maybe 8 So I put it in the same binder under $10 cards. And that's part of having a large collection. There are just random stuff like Mystic Remora. I mean, I can't even tell you how many of those I have because I don't know. But I can tell you I have a lot. And uh, Balefile Dragon, like this card was sub $2. Wow, sub $1 for a Mythic Dragon. Hmm. Mythic Dragon. Hmm. Think about that for a moment. Why is this a dollar card? No, it's going to eventually go back to its $10 card. It's beautiful. It reminds me of Black Eyes, Red, no, Red Eyes, Black Dragon from Yu Gi Oh! And I did collect a bunch of them just because I like Black Eyes, Red Dragon. And actually, I was just, you know, using them. I was trying to get um, them altered into Black Eyes. No, Red Eyes. Red Eyes, Black Dragon. And then it's White Eyes, no, Blue Eyes, White Dragon. Yeah, okay. Yu-Gi-Oh. It's been a while since I played Yu-Gi-Oh. But um, I actually wanted these altered into the Red Eyes. And that didn't happen. I paid a commission. It didn't actually get done. But I got the refund via PayPal. So it's very unfortunate. So I do have at least a playset of these. I probably have a few more. I did open a ton of Innistrad. And this is one of those cards that you no one you wouldn't trade it away. Because at the time, no one want, no one wanted it. So then you just put it in the non wants binder, or for me, I put it in the non wants um, card uh, the deck box where I just put all the mythics. And I buy a lot of just bulk, uh, bulk mythics and bulk rares and uh, bulk in general. And then I pick out what I think is good, and then I give donate the rest to Goodwill or to your local high school. So I am looking for a local high school. One of the math teachers, uh, he used to be my friend, but he moved out of state. So I would always give it to him so he could give it to his students. So obviously, if you're in Houston and you can verify that this is exactly what you're going to do, then I have tons of bulk for you uh, because, you know, I need my space and my home. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.